Hello everyone and welcome to another Vampire the Masquerade related video. This time we're going to talk about a new Vampire the Masquerade game, something that you guys were poking me a lot in the comments below my videos to talk about, to cover some more information about this game, and I was actually strategically waiting to be able to get a better glimpse on it so I will be able to provide you better information and oh boy, I do have some today. We're going to talk about Coteries of New York, the game made by Polish studio Draw Distance, which debuted with its press build on the last ParadoxCon, so for those of you who attended ParadoxCon you were able to play a little bit of it already. It's going to release as planned this year and it's going to release in December. So very soon I'll be actually able to give you a let's play and show you the gameplay in itself, but today I want to talk about my first impressions, because I was able to play the game on Switch during ParadoxCon and talk with the developers, and I also received a different build that I have just played, and uh, summarizing this uh, impressions and information from both of these builds and the conversation, here I am to talk with you about the Coteries of New York. To summarize the genre, it's basically a visual novel with some extra gameplay elements. The hunger mechanic, there is a lore glossary, an encyclopedia that you slowly fill up throughout the game with all the Vampire the Masquerade info you might be interested in, and the choices do give you a chance to use your disciplines. There's also the mechanic of the map, which I will cover a little bit more in this video. But in general, yeah, it's a visual novel or a narrative experience with some gameplay elements to make it all more than just a pure visual novel. Novel. So to say it's simpler for those of you who are not familiar with the visual novel genre, it is the game of choice. You are met with different circumstances and with different events and you react to them accordingly, getting a chance to react in one of the few different ways and in the end you receive different outcomes. There was actually a visual novel based on Vampire the Masquerade world before, it was called We Eat Blood and All Our Friends Are Dead. There is one video of this game on my channel before, I think it actually got deleted from Steam recently too. But anyway, the difference in between these two games is pretty big. The previous game was very much looking and feeling more like a mobile game and the style of writing was a lot more abstract, a lot more, let's say, artistic. Um, metaphorical. There was a lot less meat when it comes to lore and a lot less meat that uh, maybe usual players of Vampire the Masquerade or people who came from Bloodlines would expect. And the game was more of a impression of being a vampire based on the text conversation in between different people. It was interesting certainly, but it was very much different. This game, Coteries of New York, is very much what you can expect when someone will tell you Vampire the Masquerade visual novel. And it does feel that the developers of it, did play Bloodlines before and grasped all this uh, atmosphere and uh, the themes that people might have been interested in when exploring a game like that. It just seems to ring the similar bells. It's the same kind of a feeling I had when I was playing Red Embrace Hollywood, which is actually not a game licensed by World of Darkness. It's just the thing with the music and the general setting and the imagery that it uses and the little tidbits in the text which give me the idea that developers did play Bloodlines and know what the thing is about. <laughs> now what is the twist? So the twist about Coteries of New York is that you are to form a Coterie. And the Coterie is the culture of Thing in the world of vampires where you find vampires that think alike. They might be of different clans, they sometimes in very rare cases maybe even of different alignments, not exactly all belonging to the same faction. And you work together supporting each other's causes and uh, doing your best to help each other out. It's basically like a social network of friends in the world of darkness that obviously has to be not so beautiful and great as the social links of friends usually are. There's a lot of more darkness to it, there's a lot of more mistrust and uh, very weird ways of getting to know each other initially. But in general, yeah, it's about forming this little circle of friends around you, circle of blood-sucking people friends, but friends nonetheless. The game does take place in New York and it seems to be very much on point when it comes to trying to give you the glimpse of the setting. You have the names of the streets, the districts, you have the map of New York that has been given to you on which you more or less move around. I do feel that there are actually little hints to the general Vampire the Masquerade New York lore in it as well. Anyway, I do believe a little bit that it's a missed opportunity because it is a game made by European studio, a Polish studio, 
video and I think that after so many different games and uh, books and lore tidbits that we got from US and a lot of people actually going back with their minds with their memory to Redemption which was partially taking part in Europe I think people would be really into having a game like that set in the European setting it doesn't have to be Polish exactly but maybe Vienna maybe Prague I think it would be really interesting and yeah I think that the developer could be a little bit more brave because I think they picked something that was uh, somewhat familiar New York is of course not the West Coast and because of bloodlines I think vampire very much engraved itself in our mind with Los Angeles. Even Seattle shown in Bloodlines 2 was initially shown by the Pier 57 which gave us the Santa Monica vibes and everything like that so I think it is you know partially new but yeah the twist could have been taken a lot more further and I do believe that it would be even more interesting if they put this in the European city but that's just me. Anyway I played two builds. One build was uh, I think taking part from the very beginning of the game which is at your embrace and you are able to be embraced as one of the three clans that I've seen available so I believe that in the first build I've got I was able to only play as Ventru so I continued this tradition and in the second build I also played as Ventru but you can also play as Bruja and Toriator and depending on which clan you choose you do have a different beginning when I played as Ventru in the initial build which showed me the very beginning of the game I remember starting in the big corporative facility I was this uh, little corporate rat who was uh, deep at work and uh, depending on your choice of a clan you not only have a different little events throughout the game but also different disciplines. Game gives you a chance to use your disciplines in different various areas of the game so there can be a choice to use your dominate or use your presence or use something else depending on the situation. I very happily used my dominate and presence when I was playing as a Ventru and uh, the effects were always very really satisfying factory so I was very happy with that. I don't think there was actually a chance to fail but my events were against mortals. Maybe it's different when you do it against more experience and stronger vampires. Anyway when it comes to the story of the game I think I was purposefully given two builds which give me a little bit of the hole in between so I didn't know exactly what happened. In the first build I was sired by a guy who seems to be a little bit menacing. He had a little bit of an evil thing to him that I didn't quite trust it. I was constantly trying to disobey to him and he was constantly telling me that this is going to be my last night if it goes on but fortunately although I was very much of a rebel rebellious little child, he did spare my life in the end. I don't really think it is possible to die so early in the game. At least I was trying my best to do so and in the end it didn't work. <laughs> There are possibilities of game over throughout the game though. For example, there is a hunger mechanic and you have a lot of opportunities to feed during your quests. So you may, for example, see a passerby with a dog or you may see a lone jogger in the park. And these situations allow you to take your chance to feed. There's always some risk involved. For example, when I was meeting Tamika, I was being told by the game that it is not a custom to feed in someone else's domain. So I was afraid that I might make the game girl don't like me so I didn't decide to feed on the jogger in the park. But if you don't use the situations and if you purposefully avoid your chances to feed, your beast will wake up. So you don't really have the hunger meter which tells you how hungry you are. Your character's inner beast sometimes waking up and telling you that you feel more and more hungry. And if you ignore it for long enough, a new events happen in which you lose control over your character. And you may go on a, I don't know, maybe murdering spree or something else. Anyway, then something happens, something because I didn't play until the end of the first build and uh, the second build starts with me being already under the protection of the Toriator called Sophie. She's a very enticing character. She tells you a lot of things about the different clans and about the world of darkness and it seems like she tries to play the role of your sire. So something happens here. I think she takes you under her protection. She adopts you. Anyway, it's so Sophie who tells you that you are bound to find yourself a coterie and uh, it will be easier for you to go for the world of darkness especially as the young unexperienced vampire if you form one and she gives you a list of names and interesting young kindred individuals that you may reach out to and help them out to actually start your own coterie 
And how does it work? Well, very basically, you go around the city, you visit different potential members of the coterie, and you're like, hey, you wanna be friends with me? The game actually even makes fun of this thing. When you meet Tamika, who is the gang girl, a very attractive gang girl, she's like, yep, it's, you know, it's pretty corny what you're doing in here. But of course, it doesn't work this way. You cannot just tell them, hey, you wanna be friends, and then you become friends forever. You need to go through some shit together. So in the end, it is the game about favors. You giving favors to your fellow potential coterie members and trying to win them back, while also discovering the political situation and the general situation of the city. And the situation is interesting, let me just tell you that. We have Prince Panhart, a female prince who seems to be extremely modern, very lenient, let's say. I mean, not only is she accepting film blots in her domain, but also something that's shocked me, you know, an old school Camarilla person, she has a film blot primogen. I know. I've met him once in the game so far, and he already said that apparently his position in the council is uh, very much at risk, and I don't doubt it because everyone will want him out in any normal domain. But there's another thing that made my old Camarilla soul tremble in fear. This Finblot Primogen, he is a cleaver. A cleaver is the predator type of the Vampire the Masquerade version 5. Uh, we have predator types right now, by the way, so vampires usually pick the ways in which they feed and they stick to them. So you have sirens who feed during sex, you have alley cats who feed in the dark alleys, usually just snatching humans and drinking and running away, and you have many more types, but you also have cleavers. And cleavers are probably the most hated, usually, most despised predators in the Camarilla in general, and very often there are thin bloods. So cleavers are vampires who still try to maintain their daily lives, their regular lives with their family. And from what I've gathered from the build I got so far, Finbot Primogen is still living with his Hecken family, and you have to actually be very careful when you approach his house with your friend Nosferatu, by the way, because you can wake them up and he just... why? Just don't do that, this is... no! I'm telling you, if I was the prince of that domain, just buy that stuff clean and get them out of my city. <laughs> but now, for real, I think it's a very interesting concept and I like the fact how much the game is taking a lot of things from V5. It seems to be very much based on the new setting. There's a lot of things that indicate that. Uh, the existence of Finblots, the existence of Finblot Primogen, of course, and some little additional things. For example, the potential coterie member from the clan Nosferatu, D'Angelo. He doesn't look very monstrous. Uh, he actually looks like a uh, crooked bum, and uh, he's actually one of the most fun members, I would say, one of the most fun characters I've met, I really enjoy him. When it comes to other Coterie members, I've also met the gang girl Tamika, who seemed to be very independent and uh, very attractive as well. I really hope there are romance options in this game, I haven't asked actually, but I really hope they added the options to romance or Coterie members. And damn, I don't want to romance that Nosferatu, can I do that? <laughs> There's also Tremere called Agathon, and Agathon is funny because he has this extremely angry look on his face all the time, and he literally looks like he plans to blood boil everyone around. He's a very typical Tremere. And fun fact, his sire, the regent of clan Tremere, looks exactly like the female Tremere from Bloodlines 1. <laughs> like, she looks exactly the same. There's also a Malkavian girl that I haven't got a chance to meet because she wasn't available in my build. And I think there might be more. These are the ones they've met in the little slice of the game they've gotten. The mechanic in the game actually will force you to make some choices because there is a day and night cycle and uh, you have to pick things that you will do during the night. So you will go and meet this particular a coterie member or someone else and then you have to rest and there's a set time during which the main quest goes on so i don't think you'll be actually able to unlock everything and see everything in one playthrough there are of course different choices to be made the game potentially has a lot of replayability so in general to sum it up what i like the most are really nicely animated backgrounds there are just painted backgrounds but they have those little animations on them which make them come to life which is actually pretty nice 
The music out there in my build was very repetitive. I really hope there's more. But the little music that I heard has a lot of a Bloodlines vibe to it, so I really enjoy that. And the fact that the game is based on V5 and has a lot of these new concepts to Vampire the Masquerade, and I really like the way the system is going, personally. So I hope to see more of that in the final game. Anyway, I will be doing the let's play of that, of course, on this channel, so you guys will be able to see it fully after the release. And yeah, I hope my information dump was uh, excessive enough for you guys to know more now about countries of New York. Thank you so much as for now, and I will see you in the let's play, and I will see you in other videos. But in the meantime, don't get lost in the night. Goodbye.